All right, guys, let's talk about trauma. It's been a few days since I've done an Argento film, so I apologize, but <laughs> I really am getting to them as fast as I can right now. Um, so now this movie is the first movie that Asia Argento starred in for uh, our, you know, Dario. And uh, she's about 18 years old here, and she is just wonderfully gorgeous. Um, not a great actress. Not a great actress. But that being said, I don't really feel like many people give a great performance in an Argento movie, really. I mean, when I really pay attention to all the characters throughout the films that I've watched so far, I don't think Argento is a very good uh, acting director. Like, he's great at style and he's great at all these different things, but there's a lot of shitty acting in his movies. So... Um, yeah, I, I, I remember, I've seen her in a few different things over the years, like Triple X and, um, Land of the Dead and, you know, other movies like American movies and movies with other directors and she seems better. I'm looking forward to watching like Mother of Tears and other things that she's in with, with Dario. Uh, and this is like her first starring role. So she may have been a little nervous. I mean, shit, she has to get topless in front of her father. I don't know if he was in the room for that or not, or... You know, I know a lot of people are like, what the fuck? And he's, you know, I know she's also, I think, has some... She has, like, rape scenes in the Stendholm Syndrome. So, um, I know a lot of people find that weird. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, to be completely honest. But it is what it is. Uh, we also have Frederick Forrest in this. Which, Frederick Forrest is an actor that's been in freaking tons and tons of things. But I would say the two roles that I know him best from is as the army surplus guy in Falling Down. Think about it. His character in that is just, is so memorable. Such a great, awful character. You know, this skinhead, dipshit. You know, I, I love his performance. And if you haven't seen Falling Down with Michael Douglas, seriously, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, get on it. Um, but another role that he played, which is a little bit more close to home for me because of how many times I've seen it, is as Julie's father in Valley Girl. Valley Girl is a movie I bring up all the time because I've seen it freaking 500 times and I just adore it. And he plays the exact opposite character in that. He is like a, a freaking, you know, and falling down, he's a skinhead, hates everybody, wants them all dead. And this in Valley Girl, he's a, uh, you know peace-loving hippie. And this one, he is an uh, anorexic psychiatrist. So, guy's got some range. Um, we have also got Piper Laurie in this. Um, best known, I would think, from Carrie, as Carrie's mother. They're all gonna laugh at you. And uh, Brad Dorff. And do I really need to say who Brad Dorff is? Um, but it's always great to see him in here in any movie, uh, his voice especially, especially when he yells. Like, you you can hear Brad Dorff's voice and you definitely think Chucky, but when Brad Dorff yells, it, it it is always just instantly, you just feel like you're watching Chucky in that moment. Um, so uh, it kind of takes me out of it, so to speak, in a way, because I'm just like, that's Chucky. Um, but he's such a fantastic actor. I mean, from the freaking, uh, you know, the One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest performance, which is fantastic, all the way to like Grima Wormtongue in uh, Lord of the Rings and you know, so many, so many other performances. He's just wonderful. Um, so now this film is extremely confusing and I'm gonna do my best to try to give my uh, thoughts on what actually happened here. Uh, this is one of those ones that kind of was getting at the end and things were happening and I was like, wait, what? Wait, 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 where, where was this and how, who? Fuck, okay. So maybe I'm crazy here, but it was pretty damn confusing, but I think I got the majority of it here. Um, I think the thing that is going to be most memorable from this film besides Asia Argento's perfect breastuses is the specific killing tool that is created for this film. Now, obviously we're doing a spoiler discussion here, so I'm gonna just kind of talk about it, you know, throughout, uh, jump back and forth. So, as far as like the whole plot line goes, 
this woman has a baby and she's delivering it, Piper Laurie's character, and the doctor, Brad Dorif, uh, cuts the kid's head off accidentally as she's giving birth during a power outage. The nurse in the room convinces him to give the mom electroshock therapy so that she won't have any memory of what he's just done. So then her daughter becomes an anorexic and is in treatment. And the mother holds a seance to talk to her son. In the seance, I think... Like, I know that she talks to Robert, if that's his name, right? She says, like, a hundred times in the movie. Um, and he says, you know, there's a killer in the room, and he's present, and whatever. And I think she then has, regr like, regresses and, and remembers what happened. So she goes out, and she lops off her husband's head. And um, I do like that. Asia comes out and she sees like the two heads, almost like the headless horseman kind of thing going on, or you know, holds the head up. But it's like two heads, and it looks like her mom's head and the other guy's head. So it looks like her mom's dead. That character is out of the picture. Um, I do think they manipulate. I think they shot it one way, and then when they showed it the second time, we kind of got to see what she thinks she saw, and then we got to see what actually was seen because it looked like two actual separate heads that were being held up. And then when we see it at the end, it's the mom's head in the center and then the mask off of here. Um, you know, it reminds me of something like, uh, in, I don't want to give any spoilers for that movie actually. So just in case you haven't seen it, I'm going to skip along. Never mind. Um, but then, yeah, so the, the mom goes off and, and designs this tool to get back because she, they decapitate her baby, so she has this tool that decapitates people, and she starts killing staff from the you know the hospital, uh, both now and from before, to get vengeance. And then she pins it on the psychiatrist. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure why. Like, there's so many questions I have, and 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 it's so convoluted, and it. You know, it, it really is like you have to be like, okay, like she just happened to know and, and went over here and this and that. like there's so many things that you're like, all right, that's coincidental and this is, but that's our gentle movies. They don't ever really make sense. And I like how with these kinds of movies, people can be like, oh, well, you know, even though it's convoluted and it's, and it's not realistic in the slightest, like that's okay. But something like, I hate to defend this right now because I'm not trying to talk about that, but I was just talking about it earlier today with somebody and they were just like, oh, the Saw films are so convoluted and silly and this and that. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, are they, are they? Yes, but they do play within the realms of reality to an extent and they have great continuity and it flows and it all goes in pieces together. Like... It, it the the like the chances the odds of it happening are so low don't get me wrong but there's certain like films like this and other Argento movies where it's just like that wouldn't happen like no matter what so I don't know it's funny how people will look past one thing and not the other usually that's used to that's dealing with you know time a lot of time passes and and then movies get a pass like. They're like, ow, the movie was made in the 70s. So who knows? Maybe in 20 years, 30 years, people will watch the Saw movies and be like, oh, man, come on. They were made in the 2000s. Like, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing back then. <laughs> Let it go. Um, I can definitely relate heavily to the guy in this movie because he meets this beautiful, helpless girl and he just has to be her knight in shining armor. He has to run after her. He has to try to rescue her. I mean, you're talking about pretty much my entire 20s. <laughs> I did this. I, I dated girl after girl after girl that were just freaking, you know, damaged and, and you know, needed my help and, and took advantage of me in every way just because I had to, you know save them or whatever stupid shit. So I totally understand. I totally get this guy. This guy is much, very much me. Um, 
the the kid in this is pretty random the kid that ends up killing the girl at the end like he just is next door it's okay it's just kind of like convenient in a way but i still like it the film you have to just take pretty much everything that happens in this movie with a grain of salt and just be like oh yeah well that would happen we yet another have another black gloved killer oh geez um the kid crushes a lizard in this when he's scared uh lizards just do not get uh by in argento films um <clears throat> He's supposedly into Asia Argento, but he then has a girl come over. I guess he's trying to prove to himself because his coworker or whoever the hell that is, is like, so did you take her to bed yet? And he's like, she's a kid. And then a woman calls him and she, he's like, she's like, well, what's she doing? And he's like, come on, she's a kid. And then he has the girl over and he starts fucking her with his door open while that girl's in the house and is having sex with her loudly. And then Asia comes out, sees it and runs off like crying and feels betrayed because you know i guess she's into him and he runs off and and she's like what are you gonna do like she's a this and that and he's like come on she's just a kid and then she immediately runs out and just starts making out with her and takes her back to his room and they sleep together like literally sleep together not have sex and she wakes up in the morning she's like i wanted to have sex with you but i can't yet and he's like oh it's okay and it's like were you just saying this was a child like an hour ago, weren't you fucking somebody else in front of her like a couple hours ago? And now you guys are like rolling around in bed and laughing. And <laughs> yeah, as I said, the realism is just completely gone here. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, and the killer only kills in the rain, which... I, I mean, I guess that just goes back to it's an electrical power outage because there was a storm outside, so she only can kill in the rain. So when there's no rain outside or whatever, she goes and she has to, like, hit the sprinkler system so that it's, like, raining inside the room, which I actually kind of thought was pretty cool. A um, lot of good decapitations. I really like the uh, decapitation here, uh, the, the machine that she uses. Uh, but the one, she tries to kill Brad Derrick's character, and wraps the thing around his neck and his like necklace I guess breaks the mechanism so she like drags him over how this woman has enough power to overpower this man I don't know I'm not being sexist people okay get off my ass um she, he could just physically take her I'm sorry it's just true uh but she drags his body over bullshit uh and holds him down as the elevator like he, they have to be decapitated like that's how she's getting vengeance here like, it has to be a decapitation no matter what. So, her tool breaks, and it's like looking around, improvising. Uh, um, there's an elevator. All a good, good thing. It was like one of those, um, you know, old freight rail elevators or whatever. Otherwise, that wouldn't work. I don't know what she would have used then. Um, and another weird thing that happens in this movie is, and I guess this is just for style choices, I suppose, but all the decapitated heads live for like another 20, 30 seconds after like one tries to speak, but they don't have oxygen. So they can like, it wouldn't make any sound. Um, mostly because it wouldn't be moving at all. Like supposedly your brain stays alive for a good, like 30 seconds or a minute or something. Like I know I heard that when I was looking into like old guillotines and stuff, they said your brain stays alive. So you know you're like you looking up at your severed head for like a couple seconds. I, I don't know how long it's supposed to be, but you don't have like mobility in your face. You don't have the ability to scream like Brad Dorff's head flying down the elevator shaft and whatnot. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, I, I, it's it's good. I liked it. I think overall, like once I kind of started to like be like piecing it together and taking these pieces and be like, okay, I think on a multiple watch, like if, if I watched it again, cause it's been a while since I see it, so I don't remember any of it. I think on a second watch now, I would understand what was going on much better and look for those things. So overall, it was pretty good. Um, I enjoyed it. So anyway, all right, let's move on.